What's up guys and gals, welcome back to Nemoria, my name is Splattercat, we are here at the Nerd Castle, fiddling around with the city of Nopton, hoping that we can get some things done during the course of this episode, I mean we've got a lot of things done, ooh that's weird, why did it queue them all up in just one stone cutter? That is a disappointing turn of events, I was hoping that it would sequence the assignment of the marble block building in between the four like I'm doing with my cursor right now, or bounce them in between so that you've actually got more people building blocks at any given moment. Unfortunately, that does not appear to be the case. They are all crafting out of a single bench, which is bad. Very, very bad. The only thing good about that situation is it does leave these guys down on the bottom floor open to do like whatever the hell it is that they feel like doing. Do we have any shadowy corners here? What is that? Hold on, let me close this down here. It's lead, so we've officially run out of iron. Bad. Bad, 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 bad. I mean, there's iron on this side, but there is a cavern to be concerned about over there. And we didn't find any down here. Let's go ahead and get our torches built first and foremost before I forget about it. We'll drop a torch right there, and then we'll drop a final torch right here. And so I think this lair has probably just about outgrown its usefulness. Let's take a final head count on how much iron we ended up getting out of that situation. We've got 120 iron ore. Now it is important to note that a lot of this ore is being converted into bars as we speak. And so we do want to take a look and see what we've got here. We've got a steel bar ready to roll right there. I'm not going to craft armor until I'm ready to do it in a big bursty fashion. So at least until I'm ready to craft all of their breastplates, I'm not going to build armor. The reason in so doing is it's going to expand our kingdom worth very, very quickly. And so we want to be careful that that doesn't sneak up on us. I think each steel breastplate is worth something like 8,000 or 7,000 worth. And so each one of those that we build is going to skyrocket our kingdom value. So we want to be very, very careful. For example, what happens if we build one at a time? So let's say that we build a full suit of steel plate mail for one guy. And that's all that we do. Well, we're going to have increased our... We're going to have increased our city's worth by about 30,000. While only having up, upgraded one of our guards. So the, the probability is that no, the goblins are going to start coming in and steal armor. And we're only going to have one guy who's going to be on an even level with them. So we want to make sure that we're kind of going through this sequentially. So we'll build four breastplates. They'll take them one by one. We'll build eight boots. They'll take them two by twos. We'll build eight gloves. They'll take them two by twos. You know what I mean? In fact, it may even be a wiser idea just to do weapons first. Might be a better plan. And something that might be worth investigating. I think... That may be the first thing I do, is I may make them some weapons first, but for now, oh yeah, I replanted our cotton field as a vineyard. And so, in the true spirit of Napa Valley fashion, I made this. I live right by the Napa Valley, and oh my god, if you ever want to see some crazy cars, drive through the Napa Valley. So to get home to where I live, I have to drive through the Napa Valley, and every single time, we, we keep count every time we drive home about what we see. Last time we saw a Maserati, we saw an Audi R8, we saw a... Lambo and we saw something else. I think it was a really really high-end Tesla and Every time you drive through they're just the cars you see out there just the sheer wealth in that kind of geographical area is like oh my god And they got like mansions and everything else out there one of the fields though has fake sheep in it The strangest thing so they've got like this enormous mansion that looks like some Victorian construction Like it basically it looks like something actually not even like a Victorian almost got like a Versailles type thing going on too I don't think I would call it Victorian. I would say it's almost like something you would see from you know Louis the 13th or something like that. It's the, it's the weirdest thing. But anyways, it looks like a palace at Versailles and it looks amazing. And so the whole thing looks very classy, looks very nice. It's all lined in brass and all kinds of other kind of cool things. And then they've got this giant field next to the vineyards and they've put giant steel sheep in the fields and it's I don't know, just going with the classy aesthetic. I don't think that they nailed it right there. I feel like the sh the giant metal sheep that look like they've been made in some giant cast iron furnace. I don't know, just a field full of giant shiny robot sheep. There's something more terrifying about the situation, I think, than actually relaxing or artistic. But then again, I'm kind of a kitschy individual, so I wouldn't really come... Don't ask Splattercat about anything artistic, because my artistic skills are relegated to, like, stick figures. That's about the best that I can do on any given day. I think I've talked about that already. All of our fields are growing. We've got more and more animals around. We've got one llama that's waiting to be butchered. I don't think I'm going to jump on that right now. Logs have recovered in between episodes because this field got harvested. I'm pretty happy with where our farmers are at right now. I think we're finally at the point where our workers have reached the... They've reached the numbers where we can probably start putting people back into a military training group. And so what I may do is I may pull a little bit of an Ender's game right here. And now that all of these guys are master killers, 
I may give each of them their own squad that each uses the same weapon that they do so that they can train the guys in the squad to be better at those weapons quicker. And then after we do that, we'll collapse them back into the first action reaction team, kind of outsourcing the training and making sure that everybody ends up really, really good at whatever it is that they do. However, we need a supply of gnomes before we can do that, so we'll wait for an excess number of gnomes before we start putting any of that on the books. Now we'll look down here and see how we're doing in this coal mine. Not very well, but we can place torches. So we'll place a torch right there, and then we will continue to mine out this area. I think I'll start right there. Maybe we'll just kind of do another little square area right there. And yes, I know this is incredibly inefficient with regards to mining. I should be doing little, you know, catacorner, every other type mining situations. But, meh. I like, I like the way it looks when I just do big swaths of stone. I don't know why. I just like the way it looks. Maybe I've got some weird thing going on mentally. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I really like to keep things symmetrical though. I really, really prefer that things be symmetrical and lined up properly. This would have driven me crazy a lot more a few years ago, I think, but I've kind of overcome it. I started purposefully, like, leaving things out of alignment in my house and whatnot, just being like, eh, don't fix it. Just see what happens. And it seems to have turned out okay. I don't think I want to do that because you can see that ramp right there. However, what we can do is we can go out to there and then we can kind of expand this way in the pursuit of a bit more iron. And so there it is. Our mining adventure continues. I'm going to go back up to the top level. I don't really have a whole lot to showcase for the day. This is one of those episodes that I decided to record more because I wanted to play Nemoria, but I wanted to have you guys along too. I don't know what it is about a game being more engaging, but for me it's more entertaining to play a game when you guys are here to see what it is that I'm doing and I'm not completely sure why. So what I want to do at my stone cutter is we're going to come in here, we're going to say... Honestly, let's just have him craft repeat. And over here, we'll say the same thing. Craft repeat. On this one, we'll do the exact same thing. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and line this up with regards to... There it is. And this one, we're going to do the exact same thing. And I do have a plan right here in case you were wondering. So don't think that I'm just designating this without any sort of motive, and instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop those back to a 6 priority, meaning if there's nothing else going on, you guys come over here and just build blocks to your heart's content. Just make sure that we always have enough blocks to go around that are made out of marble, because we have a lot of construction to do. I mean, we have a metric ass ton of, and that's a ton that could fit inside the largest of asses, and it needs to get done as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and lower the priority right there. Hey, another yak is born. This yak is taken off to the field of slaughter. So let's go down to the butcher's menu and make sure that this is getting done. Alpaca pasture. No, we want the death pasture. That male yak is now condemned to die. And the male alpaca from the La Murder stage is ready to go as well. Not going to finish this right now because as I said, I'm going to try and build one on the higher layers. I mean, I could finish it right now. But we'll do it later. We will do it later. Up here... The things that I want to accomplish, we'll go ahead and build some flooring terrain. We'll call those chiseled stone floors. And am I on the right layer right now? I'm not so sure that I am. My goal here... There we go. That's what I wanted. So my goal at the moment is to leave a little space for a staircase to go upwards. There it is. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop what you're doing right this second. This cannot be okay. They're taking lapis lazuli blocks over there. Not something that I'm stoked about. I think all of the things that I said are marble blocks, right? Okay, good. Everything that I assigned is a marble block. We do appear to be recovering on our log supply, which is always nice. Let's go ahead and redo that. So we'll go floor terrain. And I knew you guys probably saw it before I did. I can almost guarantee you did. So let's go chiseled stone floors made out of marble blocks. There we go. So now we're looking a little bit better. Let's make sure we're on the proper layer before we go ahead with this build order. Oh, and I've done it improperly again, so what I'll need to do now is a merchant from the Rag Kingdom has arrived. 
That's cool, cool. That's all right. I don't have a problem with it. And getting those to go away is always difficult. There we go. So now I'm finally on the proper layer. Sorry for the frustration, guys. I know you're probably sitting there getting... Oh my god, how hard is it to select the right layer? How long have you been playing this game? And I will be like, a while, but I still managed to screw it up, believe me. So we want to build terrain. We want to build a floor, chisel, there we go, third tries the charm. So this time we're on the proper layer, and we're going to take it out to right there. And we're going to skip that row. Leave that like so, and that's where we're going to put our staircases over there. We'll fill it in a little bit further in the future. A merchant has arrived, so let's go ahead and peruse his wares and see what we can get out of him. I don't know if he's going to bring anything useful to us. We've got copper ore. Obviously, we'll throw that in the back. We've got malachite. We'll take that as well. Tin. We'll take it. Silver ore. We'll take it. Strawberries, grapes, apples, wheat grains. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. We don't have any emus yet, and I would like to have emus. Unfortunately, they're not bringing them to us. So, until they bring us and they feel, or I'm sorry, they feel fit to bring us emus, we will not have any. There was an emu field where I grew up, where the guy had probably a dozen of these things, and they just look at you with that dead-eyed bird stare, where they're just like bask in the gaze of my unintelligibility. Like, that's not an animal that I feel like has a whole lot of. I could be wrong. I've never hung out with an emu, but it doesn't feel like it would be the smartest animal ever. And I haven't heard anything too flattering about ostriches, so I assume the rule still applies. I could be wrong. Cassowaries are scary as hell, too. Those things, they got, it's because they've got a hat. They are everything that an emu is. All the bad temperament, and yet simultaneously they have a scary hat. A scary little flappy skin hat. So we need... what do we need here? A lot, actually. And we have a couple of statuettes. I'll probably try and get rid of those. Because why not? Poor honey badger statue. There we go. And I think I'm going to fill in the rest of the space by getting rid of all of the worn gear. I mean, obviously, I don't think that's going to make up a huge deficit like we have right now, but there's a lot of stuff laying around, so we might be able to get away with it. Okay. Having fixed all of that, we've still got to make up for 50. Well, at least it's an even number. It could be a lot worse. It really, really sincerely could. So I'm willing to bet that we probably have a lot of cotton seeds laying around near the top. So that's the first place that I'll probably look for materials to get rid of all the extra stuff that we have around. And 419 cotton. I'll hold on to that. But the cotton seeds that we will no longer be using, we'll just fill those in right this second. There's your 50. And so I know that I'm a little bit off, but whatever. They can have whatever they want from us. I don't really care that much. And I think that'll actually drop my kingdom worth. Yeah, we went down by about 2,000 right there. And that's perfectly okay with me. That's not a big deal. That's not something that I'm going to sit around like gnashing my teeth and lamenting about. It's all right. Now these have been assigned. Good. Let's go ahead and check on our mining projects down here. If we got any coal out of the situation, I'm not seeing it. Or they already looted it. I might have to put a torch over in that corner. I'm hoping I don't, but if we do, then a, fi a pox on you, cavern. Because I don't want to place more torches than I have to. It's a giant waste of coal. But at the same time, this layer right here has a bunch of coal. So we'll start on this one next. We'll go out two from each corner. And we'll just kind of see what the trajectory is looking like. And as he said it, he did it improperly. Whatever. It's... Not the right shape, but it's close enough. And that'll net us maybe another 5, 10, 20 coal, depending on how far this stringer goes. It does look like it is going to string out on us, which is very, very good. So we'll continue the mining op off in this direction towards the wall of the cavern. Or I'm sorry, the wall of the map. We will take the furniture. We'll take the torch right there. Hopefully the availability of coal doesn't vanish on us. I'm really hoping that we can get a nice little string of coal all the way from here to the back wall. Looks like it's cutting off this way, so I could be... Oh, maybe not. I don't know. It's difficult to judge the trajectory while they're digging away at things. 
Oh no, that's all that they had. Well, damn. That's unfortunate. So I'll place that final torch right there, and then we'll move on to a different lair in the hopes that we can find coal elsewhere. Bunch of tin. Not interested, really. I mean, I don't mean to hurt Tin's feelings, but it's just unappealing right now. We've reached the point in our relationship where I just don't feel like I need you around anymore, Tin. Like, You'll be sorry someday when I'm not around. You will miss me. You're going to miss me when I'm gone, and I'm going to sit around playing with teacups, making obnoxious songs that get way too much radio play. Clip, clip, clop, clop, clip, clop, clop. And then everybody's going to do the same thing and post it on the internet. <laughs> I could go on for days. These internet fads that pop up every now and again. Like, it was, it was marginally entertaining. when it, What was the name of that movie? It was a movie about acapella, which I'm not a big fan because I grew up in, like, my parents' church only sang an acapella. So if there's one thing I really dislike in life, it's acapella. Having been coerced into listening to acapella for the first 18 years of my life, just not a big fan. Not a big fan of acapella. And so making a movie about acapella... When the girlfriend's like, there's this movie and it's about acapella, I'm just like, oh dear god. That's my first response. Like, it was an inter I forget what it's called. It wasn't vaguely entertaining. It had some, like, funny moments, but it was definitely one of those movies you go see to earn brownie points or something. I don't know. I just don't know. Right now, I haven't seen Spider-Man yet. I need to go see the new Spider-Man movie. I need to cash in those chips and go see Spider-Man. I haven't gotten out of the house much, though. It's like one of those weird things where my work schedule, as of right now, I just... I am fundamentally incapable of taking a day off. I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I could take a day off, or I could play video games all day with the NCE. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna do that today because I feel the need for some weird remote sense of social interaction. I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird mood when it strikes me. And it strikes nearly every day at this point. They're gonna work their way through some emerald, or I'm sorry, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna work their way through some emerald right there because we have run out of things to make necklaces out of, which means that we don't have any trading devices to get a better deal. If I had known, I probably would have done that a lot earlier in the campaign to get ourselves squared away on yaks and things of that nature, but I don't know if you guys have seen the new Spider-Man movie. I am liking the reboot. I know some people didn't like it, but I'm, I like the reboot, I think, a little bit better than the Tobey Maguire version. I think I like it a little bit better. I can't tell you exactly why. I think they're adhering a little bit better to the comics, and I don't know. I, I think... That adhering to the comics is a good thing, but it doesn't necessarily translate very well to cinematography a lot of the time. And so a lot of- the, you hear people a ton of the time just being like, oh, that's nothing like the comic. Well, there- you have to make amends- you have to make addendums here and there. I think you have to make concessions every now and again to make- Because reading a story and watching a story are completely different. The ways that you have to interact with the audience, I think, are distinct from one another. So you have to keep people engaged, because with a movie, if you stop being entertained by a movie, eh, you can just, like, bail out, you know what I mean? I... Well, I was gonna draw a very, very weak analogy right there, but I think I'm gonna refrain, because I've seen the... I've seen the temper of the argument, and it's quite fragile, so never mind. We're gonna back away, and I'm just gonna say that I like the reboot a little bit better, and I'm not gonna make a case as to why, because I don't think I've thought it over well enough as of yet. What's going on on this floor? A little bit of... a little bit of coal? Huh? Okay, well... Right now, we're just kind of looking for random little strings of coal. That's basically, we want to go on a coal venture on this, or a coal odyssey. Ooh, I like that, a coal odyssey. Although a coal odyssey sounds like something your doctor would do to your back end when you end up with polyps or something. Be like, all right, so we scheduled for Wednesday at 3 o'clock for a coal odyssey. Like, ooh, a coal odyssey sounds terrible. What is that? Like, well, rest assured, we are going to have to put you under for it. I'm like, oh, man. This is one of those things where I'm going to walk funny for the next couple days, isn't it? Like, yeah, but you're gonna be half asleep from all the anesthesia for the next, like, ten hours, so enjoy it while you're down, bud. That's, like, the one thing that everybody has said to me about getting, like, wisdom teeth pulled or getting, like, colonoscopies or whatever is they're like, yeah, dude, but that anesthesia they put you on, you fly high for a good nine hours after you get done. It's great. It will be an afternoon well spent if you've got, like, cartoons and a bunch of popcorn. I'm like, oh, well, that doesn't sound so bad. Like, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Assuming you don't die under anesthesia, which a lot of people do. That is a legitimate fear to have. I was looking into it, and there's like, all, although there are certain types of anesthesia as well, that there are well-documented cases of people waking up, but it leaves your mind paralyzed so that you can't move or anything. Like, you still can't feel anything, but you're awake for the operation, but you look like you're asleep. I forget what it is. There's like two brands of anesthetic that they use. I'm sorry, there's two brands of anesthesia that they use that have well-documented cases of that happening. I don't know if it's a conspiracy theory or what. I haven't investigated it very well chemically or anything like that. I haven't looked it up medically, but I have... A bear has died. That's not good. That always means that something... Oh, there's a man scout out here. 
and he is way on the opposite end. If we had not seen him because of that bear, that would have been really, really bad for us. Let's send a strike team out. We're going to send our SEAL Team 6, our SAS group, to go out and murder him real fast before he runs back to his friends and lets them know that our city is super awesome and full of goodies that they can loot. But yeah, I read an article somewhere back in the day. I think it was either Vice or it was, it was a reputable source. It was Vice or it was somewhere else about anesthetic types where there's documented cases of people waking up in the middle but they can't do anything because the anesthesia is still working on a physical level it's just not working on a mental level and so it's put your body to sleep but it hasn't put your mind to sleep and I read about that and that's truly horrifying if that's the case although it has the tone of an urban legend to be honest it sounds like one of those things that a friend of a friend of a friend said so until I check into it doubt the validity of it but I would run it through rooters and see what happens or any of those websites that all they do is fact check on things. It's not Reuters. Reuters is a... Snopes. There we go. I think Snopes is the one that does all those fact checking on various urban legends and things. Which I love reading those as well. I love Americana and urban legends and things too. Because that falls within the domain of trivia in my mind. So I always enjoy learning about things like that as well. Jersey Devil and things like that. Random things that people seem to be afraid of or swear that their buddy saw it. The Death Pasture, I think we had a yak lined up, so let's go ahead and butcher those to make sure that we have enough extra meat to last us into the next season. The sun has set on our endeavors. We're making pretty good time. We're into the third year right now, and I don't really know how the structure of this series is going to go. I would prefer for it not to end up in the same situation as Mountain Blade, where I end up. I did want to talk to you guys about that, and so I may do it during the course of a video log. I haven't done a video log in a real long time, and that's or a really long time, and that's due to the fact that just like school and everything else, I don't know, I just haven't felt like doing video logs lately, but I'm going to try and get back into the habit of doing a weekly video log in which we talk about something, and I appraise you guys. I was thinking about turning it into a comic book corner, actually, because I have been getting back into, now that school is winding down to a close, I've started reading my trades again, and so I've got Deadpool Classic 1 through 4 on the way in the mail, and I've got, I think, the first couple... Punisher War Journals on the way, and then I've also got the first couple case files for Judge Dredd coming down the pipe right now. And so I've been rereading a lot of my old graphic novels and comics trades as well, and so I may actually do kind of a little book corner where at the beginning of each week I do a video log and I let you know which comic we're going to be reading. And then if you want, at the end of the week you can watch the video log to find out if the comic was any good, or you can get the comic yourself, you can read it, and we can have like our little book corner where we talk about various things that we liked and didn't like about the series. I'm trying to expand the nerd castle into other areas because there's all kinds of fun nerdy stuff that I'm into and I would hate to limit this to just video games and so I think a number of playlists that cover a bunch of different topics might be a lot of fun. So anyways, I'll probably do a video log about it. You guys can tell me what you think about the idea down in the comments below and in the video logs comments. In any case, we appear to be hitting that old 23 minute mark which is usually where I break off the Nemoria series. My point that I was trying to get to is that I don't want this to turn into like a hundred episode series where I can never kind of leave it behind if you know what I mean. Like right now with Mountain Blade, I'm actually thinking about breaking off Mountain Blade in the near future just because it's running out of material. I think it's kind of reaching that Simpsons point where I would prefer that I end on a good note rather than ending at the point where it's just sad anymore. But anyways, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerdcastle for another episode of Nemoria. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode tomorrow. Take care and I will see you all there. I do everybody.